Israel denies accusations of genocide as case opens over its treatment of Palestinians. At least 20 people were killed in a strike near the Al-Aqsa hospital as Thursday The Hague opens South Africa versus Israel case. Train drivers strike across Germany over poor working conditions and low pay, halting 80% of trains. The UN Security Council have adopted a new maritime security resolution condemning Houthi attacks on ships crossing the Red Sea. South Africa is taking Israel to the International Court of Justice, the United Nations' top court, on accusations of genocide and war crimes against Palestinians in Gaza. The country has long criticized Israel's relationship with Palestinians, drawing parallels with its former apartheid regime of racial segregation. Israel has denied accusations of genocide, arguing it has been fighting a war of self-defense. With genocide, you need to want to have committed the crime with the specific intention of destroying a group as such, destroying a group because they are that group. That's the tricky part, and that's where I, I expect that um, Israel's defense will, will focus on. It could take years before the ICJ reaches a verdict on the genocide case. But South Africa also requested a provisional court order which would force Israel to immediately stop combat operations in the region. However, there are no guarantees that Israel will abide by the ruling. There's no international police to like knock on your door and say you are in breach of a judge's order, I'm taking you in for contempt of court or anything like that. So really, it depends on what other states can, can do. Footage released by the Associated Press shows dozens of people running in a panic in the aftermath of a strike in which at least 20 people were killed when it hit a two-story building in the central Gaza city of Deir al-Bala was hit on Wednesday near the Al-Aqsa hospital according to hospital officials. IDF commanders met in the Gaza Strip. In Gaza, kilometer merubash, you don't know where to go and to get rid of it. אין דבר כזה. אחרי מה שעשיתם, לא קיים דבר כזה. אחרי מה שעשיתם, אין כפר בלבנון, אין שסם בלבנון שאתם לא יכולים להיכנס ולפרק אותו. אנחנו נשים אתכם במקומות שצריך, אתם תעשו שם את מה שצריך. Meanwhile, Osama Hamdan, a senior Hamas official, praised South Africa's genocide case against Israel on Wednesday during a press conference in Beirut. The legal battle opens Thursday at the United Nations top court. Palestinians in the West Bank gathered in Nelson Mandela Square to thank South Africa for filing the controversial case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. Train drivers in Germany have announced a three-day strike over poor working conditions and low pay. 80% of trains will not be running between Wednesday and Friday. The German train union is threatening to continue striking unless an offer is made. We have to make the job attractive, that the people come to us, that they also stay. Many go back again. And that's why it's necessary. We have to do something. The Bahnvorstand has no ideas. According to local media, a recently published report shows that Deutsche Bahn board members will receive 5 million euros worth of bonuses for 2022, despite train delays being at an all-time high. Germany is currently ranking 8th for the amount of strikes in Europe, but experts anticipate an increase in 2024. However, to catch up with France, Germany would need to strike five times more than it did in 2021. Travellers unaware of the strikes wandered around main train stations looking for alternative routes. Experts are concerned that supply chains may be hit by these strikes, with cargo train drivers also joining in. It's not just train drivers who are unhappy, but German farmers have been blocking roads with their tractors this week. It poses the question, Will the government of Europe's biggest economy be feeling the pressure yet? Liv Stroud in Berlin for Euronews.
The UN Security Council adopted a new maritime security resolution on Wednesday, condemning Houthi attacks on ships crossing the Red Sea and demanding they stop with immediate effect. Algeria, China, Mozambique and Russia abstained. US Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said the attacks were an economic threat. Houthi rebels first attacked the Israel-linked Galaxy leadership on the 19th of November and took its crew hostage. Many more assaults in the shipping lane vital to world trade have taken place since then. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky began his visit to the Baltic regions, arriving in Lithuania as Kyiv seeks to bolster its air defense amid Russia's intensified missile and drone onslaughts in the 22-month-old war. He's expected in Estonia and Latvia on Thursday. The Lithuanian government has a approved a 200 euro million package of long-term military assistance to Ukraine. In the wake of recent Russian missile and drone attacks in Ukraine, Kyiv has requested a meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council to discuss security measures. Zelensky hopes one day his country will be able to join the EU and NATO and is using this trip to build partnerships in drone production and electronic warfare capacities. Marius Kaminsky, one of two serving PIS party MPs arrested on Tuesday, has gone on hunger strike in prison. Kaminsky and Mazish Wazik were sentenced last month to two years in prison for dereliction of duty when they worked at the Central Anti-Corruption Bureau. Wiemy, że w okolicach Kancelarii Prezydenta gromadzone są siły policyjne w celu zatrzymania nas i mamy do czynienia z bardzo poważnym kryzysem państwa. Anarchia w sądach, jawny bunt w Sądzie Najwyższym. Będziemy na manifestacji, będziemy z przyzwoitymi, normalnymi Polakami, którzy są zaniepokojeni tym, co wyprawia rząd Donalda Tuska. There have been questions around the two imprisoned MPs' immunity, but Poland's ruling coalition say the chaos is one of PIS party's own making and that Kaminski and Wazik are trying to escape criminal responsibility. Spodziewaliśmy się, że partia, która przegrała te wybory, będzie jednak za wszelką cenę szukała różnych sztuczek, żeby sprawić wrażenie, że, że oni nadal mają wpływ na to, co się co się dzieje, a to wszystko odbywa się już poza ramami prawnymi. Oni po prostu nadużywają władzy, nadużywają pozycji ze szkodą dla, dla państwa polskiego. When the arrest took place, PIS party supporters gathered to protest in front of the presidential palace. Wejście na teren Pałacu Prezydenckiego i, i, i zabranie do więzienia ułaskawionych przez prezydenta ludzi, to to jest jak dyktatura, jak bezprawie. No, ja nie chcę mieszkać w jakimś takim kraju bezprawia. Dlatego tu jest. Another point of contention is President Andres Duda's presidential pardon to Kaminski and Wazik before the final court judgment was announced, meaning some recognize it and others do not. Meanwhile, other protests erupted at the police station. Other PIS MPs tried to intervene and enter the station with their parliamentary IDs, but without success. These people behind me have just announced their readiness to continue their long fight for Poland of their values. The ruling coalition has promised the same, with a policy of decisive steps. Madrena Gdomi for Eurotips from Warsaw. At least 15 people have died during rioting in two of Papua New Guinea's biggest cities. Many shops and businesses were also badly damaged amid looting. 
the unrest erupted in the capital, Port Moresby, on Wednesday after hundreds of police officers, soldiers, prison staff and public servants protested over a pay dispute. It quickly spread to Leh, with widespread looting reported in both cities. The government claims looters took advantage of the absence of police to ransack commercial properties. The government said the pay cut was the result of an administrative glitch and vowed to resolve the problem. Ecuadorian President Daniel Noboa declared a state of emergency for 60 days in response to surging gang violence since the country's most wanted prisoner, Adolfo Macias, disappeared from his cell, the government says at least 30 attacks have taken place. On Tuesday, national police arrested 13 heavily armed assailants who interrupted a live TV program, taking employees hostage and threatening them with firearms, grenades and explosives. A Russian court on Tuesday extended the pre-trial detention of theater director Zhenya Berkovich and playwright Zvletana Petrichuk, who are facing charges of justifying terrorism. This is the latest move of the Kremlin's relentless crackdown on dissent in Russia. The two Russian women will be held until March 2024. Authorities claim a play they stage, Finnis, the Brave Falcon, justifies terrorism, which is a criminal offense in Russia. The play depicts Russian women who were prosecuted after being lured into marriage in Syria by representatives of radical Islam.